What's up everyone? This is Sean, your physical therapy application coach. In this video, I'll be referencing some worksheets that you can use to help make your application process as simple and efficient as possible. To get access to these free worksheets and receive my monthly newsletter, psh, bonus, pause the video and click on the link in the description down below. It will take you to my website where you can sign up to join my email list. Also, if you find the information in my videos to be valuable, go ahead and click on that subscribe button so you can keep up to date when I post new content. Now, let me get out of your way so you can enjoy the video. Alrighty, welcome to our PTCast walkthrough. I'm really excited to be able to share this with you to give you a more streamlined way of how to look at PTCast and how to navigate it. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I wanna draw your attention to is this. So 2017, 2018 PT CAS admission cycle begins June 29th. So you can actually start inputting your information into the system sooner than July 1st, which it's been typically in the past. Not a huge advantage, but it gives you a couple of extra days to get the ball rolling. This may be beneficial though, because some schools participate in a rolling admissions system, meaning the sooner you apply, the sooner they'll review your application and either accept or reject you. So that's something to consider. There are a lot of programs that just have their submission deadline is uh, set out in October, November, whenever it is. And they don't care when you submit as long as you submit before the deadline. You will need to do your research on PTCAS and through the school specific page to find out if that program is a rolling admission um, school or if they even participate in what's called early decision. So some schools offer this program called early decision which is basically you only apply to one program and you submit everything by August 15th at the latest they will get back to you and let you know if you've been accepted into that program. And if it's a yes, then great. You only had to apply to one school, you save some money, and you can just be done with the process. However, if they reject you, this does give you some time to still be able to apply to other schools. So it's kind of risky, but if you're confident and you are absolutely love a program that participates in early decision, definitely look into this. And PTCAST has a list that you can look up. Um, I know a lot of people kind of have decided just to apply to a lot of different schools. Um, but if you have more interest in this, let me know and I can find out more information. So application day comes and it's June 29th or July 1st, whichever day you pick to start. And you're gonna go to ptcast.org. <clears throat> You'll come to the home page here. Click log in to application. And you're gonna go ahead and create an account. That's pretty straightforward. Anybody can do that. And the first thing that you are going to be asked once you create your account is determine a program that you would like to send your application to. Um, they require a minimum of, of at least one, and that's totally fine if you don't know all of the different schools that you want to apply to just yet. Hopefully you have at least one school that you're for sure like, yes, I want to apply to this one, and you'll select that school. Once you make your school selection, it'll bring you to this page, which you can see this is my dummy account that I've made, and I have one um, program selected because they have a really quick school specific supplemental essay that's on PTCAST. They have an additional one on their school website, but I just picked Eastern Washington um, as an example that we'll go through. So this brings me to the point of how many schools should you actually apply to? It's a very common question and it's important because if you look at the number of programs you apply to, it's $145 to apply to your first program and $45 each for every subsequent program you add. 
So you see here that it can add up pretty quickly. And the average number of applications per individual for the last data report was 6.2. And that number has steadily been increasing over the past few years because applications are getting more competitive and people need to apply to more programs to be able to actually get in. So I would say six or seven is a solid number. And you look here, that's already a good chunk of money. <coughs> Excuse me. If you want to add more, that's totally fine. Um, and it's also important to think about how competitive are the programs that I'm applying to. Let's just say I pick, I say I want to apply to six schools, which is what I did. And you have, um, I'd recommend that you create a tier system where you have your dream schools, where you're pretty competitive, but there's also gonna be a lot of really high quality applicants that apply to this school, and your chances might not be as good. Um, then you would have a solid school tier, which would be you have a good shot about getting into this program, um, but it's also competitive, but it's a great school, and you would love to go there. And then you maybe have your last tier, which is my, I'd be happy to go to this school, but it's not my first choice. And these are the schools where you're gonna have a great shot at getting in, but maybe it's not as good of a program as your other schools that you like a lot. Now the reason why is you need to create a gradient. So that way, I mean, if you're applying to six of the, um, six of the top 10 schools in the country, that might not be the best idea because they're all extremely competitive. So you need to kind of create a little bit of a gradient where it's like, okay, this one's pretty competitive. I match up well with their numbers and kind of filter things out like that. Going back to fees, because this is already expensive, at this point, we've paid for the GRE, which is $205. If you added, if you bought some books or supplemental materials, maybe two hundred and twenty-five or two hundred and fifty dollars. By the time you add six programs, you're looking at it right around six hundred dollars, and that's a lot of money for something that's not a guarantee. So make sure you do your homework. I've attached the schools of interest um, scavenger hunt from. The beginning of uh, starting out if you haven't participated in this activity or didn't watch those videos this is um, it gives you some resources to be able to compare schools side by side and determine which ones you want to actually apply to so to help you with this financial burden you may be able to qualify for the fee assistance program which PTCast provides for people of lower socioeconomic status or people who just don't have as make as much money so these are the the cutoffs if you will and i don't know a ton about this program i do know that it's a first come first serve basis and i had some friends who participated in, in it and you need to get a jump on this right away if you're going to participate so maybe before you do anything else besides select the program you wanna to go to, you need to apply for this assistance program and get the ball rolling and talking to PTCAS. If you want more information about this, um, talk to PTCAS or if you're very interested, let me know and I can give some more information and do some research on my own. So, what we need to do now is, let's say we've selected our programs, and you're gonna look at the deadline for when the application is due. A lot of schools have October 1st and November 1st <clears throat> as their deadlines. These seem to be pretty common. Some are in September, and others are later on. It just depends on the school but you're gonna to need to prioritize your deadlines. And I wanna make this very clear because it's important. 
So going back to you need to submit at least one application or one one school for your application to be sent off to. You want to e-submit your application as soon as possible. And when I say that, you're going to complete all of these, your personal information, academic history, and your supporting information. And at least one of these program materials. And as soon as they verify your information, they may find a discrepancy and they'll alert you of that. I haven't heard of too many people where there's been a problem, but the sooner that you submit it, the better. If you can submit in July, great. If you can submit in early August, that's great. I'd say in general <clears throat> that you want to be wrapping up at the end of August at <clears throat> as an ideal. I understand that isn't always the case for everybody, but it's a good target to shoot for. If you're a junior and you're getting ready to start another year of school, fall comes before you know it and life gets really busy. 